Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the whole meeting of Thursday, August 25th, 2011, to order. Uh, uh, Alderman, Alderman Koth is going to be taking the minutes for us tonight. Uh, would you please call the roll? Belt? Here. Boren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Excused. Matichek? Here. Rindfleisch? Here. Riesler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweele? Excused. Bercy? Here. 14 present. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next thing we have on the agenda is number four, approval of the minutes from 810. I don't believe those minutes have been published yet, so we will hold off on those until the next meeting. Number five on the agenda, we have a public uh, forum on the agenda with a limit of three, uh, three minutes per person. Uh, before we get started with that, I just wanted to mention that I got a call shortly before I left from Citizen Dimple Adams, who wanted to speak here tonight on, on behalf of uh, uh, Mayor Ryan, uh, but she was not feeling well and was unable to attend. Uh, Dimple wanted me to let the council know that she late this afternoon sent out an email to all the council members and she would like you to uh, read it at your convenience. And I hope Dimple gets well soon so she can uh, come back and see us. Uh, next we'll do the public forum. Can I just show, see a show of hands of who wishes to speak tonight? We'll start up here with the gentleman on the bench and we'll work our way back to the back of the room. Sir, you want to step forward, please? And for the record, if you could give us your name and address. Name is Job Jose, 222 Prospect Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 53081. You will have three minutes. Okay. I would like to speak on behalf of the mayor and against the um, process that you're hoping to begin against him. Uh, vigilante politics, the hijacking of Sheboygan electors. In 1776, 55 men risked the gallows when they signed a document insisting that the citizens deserve to be represented and governed by people of their choosing. At the federal government level, the citizens of every state elect their representatives and senators, and we also cast our votes for the U.S. presidency. This structure is mirrored here in Sheboygan where we elect our alder persons and our mayor. It seems, however, that most of our aldermen have become aristocrats and now are engaging in vigilante politics, wherein they hope to nullify the will of the people of Sheboygan by wrestling the mayor's position away from the voters. When I cast my vote for Bob Bryan in April of 2009, I expected my vote would last until the next mayoral election, whether that was to be a regular election scheduled four years later, or by a special recall election. But it seems that you vigilante aldermen want to deprive me of my rights as an elector by nullifying my vote. Instead of the mayor serving by the will of the people, you vigilante alder persons want to usurp the power of the people and to self-invest yourselves with greater governmental authority. I wonder if others might not join me in class action litigation against you to punish you for violating our rights as electors. I think you fear a recall election. You vigilante aldermen fear that Bob Ryan would be reelected. Mayor Ryan's behavior has been less than exemplary, but I'm afraid not even, I'm not even sure if it rises to the level of recall election. I wonder who among you is without sin that you should be casting stones. Personally, I feel that I am commanded to reprove a brother when he sins, that is, to judge his behavior against moral standards, and to admonish him if he errs. But I am also commanded not to condemn my brother, nor to mistreat him because of his sins. I wonder if you vigilante all the person thinks you, may, you have become now as gods, and that that is your source of courage by which you believe that your vigilante politics is justified. If the courts side with Mayor Ryan and the citizens of Sheboygan, 
then you and your city attorney may be responsible for costing the taxpayers quite a bit of money. Mayor Ryan may even be able to come against you in federal court using Chapter 28, Section 1983 of the United States Code and make you older persons pay personal damages for your misconduct towards him. Thank you and the council for the time. Thank you, Mr. Jose. Next. For the record, could I have your name and address, please? My name is Patrick Gillette. My address is 915 North Avenue, City of Sheboygan. You will have three minutes. Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, you voted 14-2 to ask the mayor to resign. You voted 12-2 you voted to proceed with removing the mayor from office. This council asked for citizens to come forward with valid complaints. Some of you thought that would be an impossible mission. Citizens came forward, valid complaints have been filed, and citizens have done their job. Now it's time you guys did yours. This committee, this council, started a legal procedure. The U.S. Code Chapter 28 has nothing to do with it. Wisconsin statutes clearly spell out your rights as aldermen, your responsibles, and the oath that you took. Then, at the last council meeting, most of you got wet feet. Almost killed the funding for this program. Finally approved it 9 to 6, not by a majority. You wanted to turn tail and run based on supposition, false information, and ignorance. The first complaint I brought to you will stand on its merits. The second complaint I brought was based on the felonious actions of the mayor on August 15, 2011. You started the procedure. You've got the information you need. You started this official proceeding. You have the responsibility to see it through. Someone's counting on the fact that enough people will expose themselves on a recall petition. The council already turned cold. The council's tried icing those people who did expose themselves to think that 4,120 other people will turn out is pure naivete. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gillette. Next. <coughs> For the record, could I have your name and address, sir? Yes, it's Milton R. Storm. I live at 1736 Marvin Court, Cheboygan. Thank you. You'll have three minutes. Where to begin? I've been hearing some negative reports about this council and they're not doing their job. But I'm not here to casterize you people, although I could do that. I am afraid that when I get shown on television on WTMJ and Watertown, Wisconsin, and my identical, or my uh, cousin calls me, and now my identical brother was here today, and if you want to have an identical, you go with that. So to waste time here, what I'm going to read is an editorial letter, if I can find it, that appeared in the Sheboygan Press, and this lady has been casterized by your council members of the former and our former mayor, and she's having a hard time. I've adopted her as my daughter that I never had. And she writes, you want to sit in some judgment seat? Sit in the judgment of people behind the creation of this mess, not the mayor. All you gossip mongers, perhaps it's time you see your faces splashed across half of the front page of the Sheboygan Press for oh, seven or eight days, running with lots of immoral judgment calls and revolting anonymous gossip. Give, your, give you a taste of your own desperate behavior. After all, fair is fair. I've been very blessed in my life. I guess it's the Holy Spirit. I just happened to pick this up today. It's Newsmag.com. And it says, Lessons My Father Taught Me. And it's by Michael Reagan. Now I would change this as Lessons My Son Taught Me. So I'm going to read the letter that I, or the 
statement I made at his funeral, December 15, 2001, and I called it Some Reflections of a Father. Gene and I were so blessed that God gave us a son who taught us some different ways to look at life and how to serve others. Jeff displayed a generous love simil similar to his mother. He certainly patterned his lifestyle with the wit and humor of his father. Jeff's love, his friendliness, his handshake warmed many a soul. It was his desire that others love him as he tried to show that same love to them. His silly grin was just to let you know the joy in his heart. Jeff had a big physical heart that may have done him in, but his spiritual heart was so enormous. Oh, the pain and the sadness when he was called so quickly. To have Jeff's trust in Jesus can be expressed in the song, Trust and Obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Jeff trusted, and he had a faith may not always have been obedient, but then who are we to question when sometimes we are even less disobedient? Jesus has called him for a greater nope. work above. Nope. With, oh, Time. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. To me, this is very important. Thank you, Mr. Storm. Does anybody else wish to be heard? Does anybody else wish to be heard? And for the third time, does anybody else wish to be heard? Uh, thank you to all of you who spoke at the public forum tonight. Next on the agenda is the chairman's comments. I don't have any. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is uh, items for discussion and possible recommendation to the Common Council. Item number seven, an update to the Committee of the Whole from Council President Alderman Eric Rindfleisch, Council Vice President Alderman Jer Jeremy Decker, and Committee of the Whole Chairman, Alderman Jim Boren, on the interviews that were held on August 23, 2011, of prospective attorneys for the special prosecutor for the possible quasi-judicial hearing to remove Bob Mayor Robert Ryan from office. An update may also be given on an attorney to represent the Common Council in the possible quasi-judicial hearing to remove Mayor Robert Ryan from office. Uh, I will uh, turn the discussion over to uh, President <coughs> Eric Rinfleisch. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Um, as asked by uh, this council, this body, um, uh, we uh, did interview attorneys uh, and uh, were directed to report back to this body of our findings. Uh, that evening, we did interview a total of two. Um, we extended invitations out to more, uh, but due to various circumstances, uh, only uh, two uh, were interviewed. Uh, the first was um, Attorney Booker um, from Delafield, and the second one was the law firm of Michael Best and Friedrich, um, specifically uh, Attorney Steve Viskupic. Uh, both uh, are high, obviously highly skilled. Both of them carry uh, some, I guess, bigger names, uh, but I think the, the name comes with experience in this field, which is what, quite frankly, we were looking for. The outline of the duties uh, that uh, really both agreed upon uh, are the duties as, as enumerated in Wisconsin Statute 1716. Uh, the first, each one would uh, review the verified complaints. Uh, each one would then conduct an investigation of the facts. Uh, each one would then prepare, if justified, uh, based on the investigation, uh, would then prepare a verified petition um, to be presented. Uh, both would serve as uh, counsel during the Common Council hearing uh, to do the following, present witness testimony and other factual materials cross-examine opposing witnesses, prepare legal briefs, and present arguments and suggest a course of action. Lastly, uh, both agreed uh, to defend the council decision at circuit appellate courts all the way up to the Supreme Court if that action is necessary. Uh, the difference between the two, uh, on Attorney Bucher uh, and uh, Stephen Biskupic was that Michael Bester Friedrich uh, with Stephen Biskupic was willing to work pro bono for the city. Uh, 
so the process would not involve any charge to the city uh, for the special prosecutor. And that includes all, um, um, all appellates and circuit court decisions uh, defending that if, if appealed. Um, based on that, our recommendation is to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, request that this body recommend to the full common council to hire Stephen Biskupic of Michael Best and Friedrich to begin the investigation. People have asked why at this point in time proceed with the investigation. The process removes the council from, uh, from further process um, until an actual hearing, if that's required, if that's necessary, uh, is heard. Uh, there does need to be space between the prosecutor and uh, this body. Um, and hiring one allows that space. It provides investigation into basis of facts and avoids rumors, uh, which of course we've all been dealing with. And various people are speaking about it to us on the streets, at work, uh, calling us on the phone, and so on. Um, it provides a basis of facts to either act upon or not act upon, depending on what the investigation concludes. It avoids the mudslinging in public that has been threatened. Um, the investigation will go quietly um, without necessarily our personal and intimate knowledge, day-to-day -day knowledge, and will be reported back to us to see if there's anything to continue or not to continue. The prosecutor becomes the, act, the contact point um, for all those that are contacting us at this point in time, which does allow us to focus on the city business that we have at hand instead. Um, I think furthermore, another reason to proceed is, uh, as stated, um, it is perhaps our responsibility. There has been verified written complaints from the public. Uh, is it or is it not our responsibility to act upon those complaints? Uh, and in the best way, most efficient way, uh, going forward would be with a pro bono prosecutor who does the investigation on our behalf. I think it might have been you, Alderman Van Akron, that has said it best, but I heard it from you, Alderman Hammond, most recently. Um, but picture us as a citizen filing a complaint against, say, the police or the sheriff's department, and nothing happened. How do we feel? How we feel about whitewash or sweeping under the carpet? Um, that's what's happened at this point in time. I think it's the, the most efficient way of proceeding. It removes us from um, the process until uh, a hearing is scheduled or not scheduled, depending on what the investigative findings are. So uh, I'm not here to answer any of the questions, but I urge you that uh, to recommend to the full body to go forward to accept the offer of a pro bono uh, services for special prosecutor Stephen Miskupic. I'll just add a, <clears throat> add a couple things to what President Rindfleisch said. Uh, for those in the audience and those watching on television, uh, Attorney Biskupic is uh, the former U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Wisconsin. Uh, he has uh, many years of experience in litigation, including public officials in the Milwaukee area. Uh, has a very impressive background, as did Attorney Bucher. Uh, that's just a little more information on Attorney uh, Biskupic. Is there any questions from the council? Alderman Raisler. Uh, just a couple questions. Number one, uh, out of curiosity, how much was the other attorney looking at charging? Did he say? Or was it just uh, to the $10,000? It would, would have been the, their discounted um, crime victim rate, uh, which was Two, rough two, figures. $230 $230 an hour. $230 okay. an hour. And did we look at um, possibly using any of these two attorneys for the second attorney if we needed it after a while? Just to get a rough ballpark figure is what that may cost us later on if we would need it. Um, with discussions with, um, it's on the agenda. Discuss the other. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, we have been up to this point in time working with uh, Attorney Joseph Vel Velkner from Olson, Clowett, Gunnerson, and Conway, uh, who has been our um, quasi-judicial hearing um, for law and licensing and other issues uh, in the past. Uh, and is quite comfortable working with us at that point in time as well um, for the, the, the lowest, cheapest rate. Um, it has not been uh, formalized yet. Uh, that's the recommendation would have to come through. We'd have to get the document ready for, 
for next week with the actual contracts for both. Um, but Attorney Velkner was uh, very clear in an understanding that uh, our position with, with the 10,000 and being willing to report on a regular basis where he is and, and how much and why uh, the expenditures are. Uh, I don't see that attorney costing us that much. Um, th that role of that person would only really take place during the uh, hearing itself. Thanks. Uh, if I can just add a little to that. Uh, the three of us thought that <clears throat> uh, it would be probably better for us to work with a local attorney for the attorney that's going to represent the council. Uh, either one of these two, two attorneys could have filled that role. Don't get me wrong, They're, they were highly qualified for that, but we felt with the experience uh, that Attorney Velkner had with working with the city for 10 years uh, in various, various things, including quasi-judicial hearings for the Law and Licensing Committee, we felt that it would be much easier to work with him on a local basis. <clears throat> for example, if we would have uh, wanted Attorney Booker to handle that, there's a long distance between here and Delafield, and it would just uh, it would have just been, I think, more difficult. We, the three of us, felt more comfortable because of our past history with uh, Attorney Volkner and uh, recommending him. Are there any other questions? Alderman Versi, thank you, uh, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and recommend to the full council to hire. I move forward and hire uh, attorney. Second. Is the motion to hire attorney Biskupic? Biskupic. Second. We have a motion and a second to hire uh, attorney Biskupic from Michael Best and Frederick. Is there any further discussion? Uh, President Rinfleisch. If I may. Um, my understanding, I think you've had conversations today. Um, the. Uh, uh, contract with Volkner will come to council next week re um, so we can discuss at that point in time. Right. So and we don't need a motion today for that for that position. Is that correct? Well, we, c we I guess it's at the pleasure of the council whether they want to make a motion on Attorney Volkner. We will have a, we will have a resolution or a contract from uh, Attorney Biskupic's law firm and also Attorney Volkner's uh, law firm uh, if we have this council meeting next Tuesday night, those contracts will come forward for, for final approval if that's what the council votes on tonight. Alderman Versi? Chairman, would you like me to make that motion um, to include both attorneys? Maybe that, way it's, simple. that way it's there. So I'd like to make that motion to accept both attorneys. And I'll, I'll second both. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Alderman Riesler. I guess the question I have is why would we want to hire the second attorney right away if we don't know that we're going to go forward with a hearing for the spe specific fact that we can hire that attorney at any point in time? Definitely. President Rinfleisch? Um, most of the work will be done, obviously, at the at hearing time by that attorney uh, as, as our um, counsel. Uh, but initially, communication between us as a body and the prosecuting attorney should go through our counsel. Uh, to again provide space between us and the prosecutor uh, and that's something that attorney Velkner felt strongly about so we would need to have somebody representing us initially um, once the contract is signed okay so there will be obviously a fee associated with that throughout the whole process yeah okay yeah. so there will be some fees I just want to make sure that everybody understands this is not completely cost free no. right no there uh, there will be a cost for the attorney that that represents the uh, uh, that represents the council. But we will, we, as President Rinfleisch said, we will be getting re regular updates, and he's aware of the original uh, approved $10,000. Thank you, Alderman uh, Versi and Alderman Raisler. Uh, Alderman Matichek. I uh, just had a question. So uh, with the attorney for 230, is that what he would usually charge for the one going up for pro bono, or is that what the other ones, the second one that we're now hiring as well, going to charge? That was attorney uh, Bucher. Uh, his best rate w uh, would have been the 230. Do you know what the going rate for uh, the one going for pro bono right now is? What he usually yeah. charges per hour? I would estimate to be the, the, approximately the same, though. And 
from my experience with attorneys, uh, they usually only do pro bono for one the, because they're inexperienced or they would like the experience. Or Excuse me, Alderman Matic, I can't hear you. Is that go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my concern is, is that with my experience with attorneys, uh, they usually only do pro bono for two reasons. One is that they're inexperienced and they want the experience. Or two, they want the free press. And it's the second one that, that concerns me about the reputation of the city moving forward. If we have our attorney here that's doing it because he wants the press, well, what kind of press is that going to be for the city and reputation for the city moving forward? How many more months is this going to drag out? Go ahead. Um, Attorneys will tell you there's, there's another reason as well, um, and that is the ethical obligations under the ABA and Wisconsin Supreme Court rules uh, that attorneys must follow. Uh, and this case is um, what Michael Best and Friedrich would use to um, meet those obligations. So it's not necessarily press, it's not necessarily uh, gaining experience. I don't think Attorney Biskupic needs the experience or needs the press. Uh, what it is, rather, is um, the no charge to, to fulfill ethical standards that, that So instead of volunteering for United One or uh, I mean United Way or uh, any other uh, nonprofits, he would be volunteering his time for this. Yeah, I'm not an attorney, but I don't think it's volunteers and not the time. It's providing I'm legal services is, is what they have to do. I mean, we have attorneys that may be able to answer that question for us, because again, I'm not an attorney. But mm -hmm. that's explained to us is that the reason why they're proposing uh, no charge pro bono is it helps Michael Best and Friedrich satisfy ethical obligations under ABA and Wisconsin Supreme Court rules. Anything else? I'll, thank you, Alderman Matichek. Is there anybody else? Uh, Alderman. <coughs> um, has he indicated what kind of time frame we'd be looking at? The um, time frame was not specifically discussed in the sense that the investigation has to happen first. Uh, and um, if upon beginning investigation, again, both attorneys had said, um, and there, there's no basis to proceed, they'll notify us immediately. If during the investigation there, there is uh, reason to proceed, they'll notify us. Uh, but uh, the state statutes does specify a speedy hearing. So, you know, all, for all parties involved, it has to be a speedy process. Whatever the speedy means, I don't know, but that's... Anything else, Alderman Haman? Thank you, Alderman Haman. Any other discussion? Okay, here, hearing no further discussion, uh, we have a motion and a second uh, to hire, uh, retain uh, Stephen Biskupic as the special prosecutor from the law firm of Michael Best and Frederick, and also to retain the services of attorney Joseph J. Uh, Volkner of Olson, Cloet, Gunderson, and Conway. Uh, Julie, would you please call the roll? Scout? Aye. Boring? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammer? Aye. Close enough. Heidemann? Aye. Pat? Aye. Matichak? No. Riesler? Aye. Riesler? No. Aye. <coughs> Excuse me, aye. Van Akron? Aye. Percy? Aye. Ten ayes, four nays. Uh, motion carries. Uh, the, uh, before we adjourn, uh, I believe uh, President Rinfleisch is going to try to call a council meeting, a special council meeting for this coming Tuesday night, which is August 30th, 2011, at 6 p.m., and we will be taking up uh, what we voted on tonight, of course, with the committee of a whole, is just a recommendation for the council at the next council meeting. So we will attempt to have a council meeting uh, next Tuesday, August 30th, and uh, I understand that it, uh, Attorney Biskupic and Attorney Volkner will be here on Tuesday evening if you have any questions you'd like to ask them. So uh, as far as the next meeting of the Committee of the Whole, that will be, uh, will be determined. Uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for uh, everybody that attended tonight's meeting.